Uh, my perspective may be uh, more narrow uh, than the other uh, panelists. Uh, and uh, within the comments, I'll make a couple of statements about the uh, Institute. <clears throat> Yesterday, I heard Gary make an eloquent and also elegant uh, distinction uh, between thinking and knowing. There are, in fact, three possibilities. Uh, we can think, uh, we can know, and we can think we know. So given the title of our session, I'd like to briefly comment on education and leadership. First on leadership, over 150 years ago, Leo Tolstoy in his epic uh, book, War and Peace, rejected uh, Thomas Carlyle's assertion that the history of the world is but a biography of great men. In so doing, he, along with others like uh, Gustave Le Bon and uh, Isaiah uh, Berlin debunked the, this convenient myth of the hero leader. The question is, what is the nature of leadership in this, the new economic era of the 21st century? Today, we distinguish between industrial and post-industrial paradigms of leadership. We are finally freeing ourselves from the gravitational pull of the leader-centric perspective of leadership and coming to understand that the word leadership is not synonymous with the word leader. Leadership is a relationship. Leadership is a social process, a cultural phenomenon. Leadership is being redefined, reconceptualized, and indeed revolutionized to better mirror reality, but not everyone is aware of it. Leadership is the influence relationship between leaders and followers who become collaborators and who intend real significant change based on their mutual purposes. In reality, leadership was never just the leader. Leaders and followers as collaborators both do leadership. This changes everything changes everything in terms of how we study leadership and research, uh, leadership in academics, education, and also in development. And since leadership is universal, this has global implications. The next question must be, who are we educating, therefore, and what does education consist of? Globally, Billions of dollars are spent annually to educate, develop, and train leaders through academic courses, formal workshops, and seminars, and in-house training programs. Results are poor. Findings pretty much indicate that the outcomes of these types of so-called education do not meet the desired objectives, which takes us to education. It's interesting to note our current educational system contributes to an artificial prolongation of ignorance. I don't mean to be gratuitously uh, provocative here, but you might know that in the Middle Ages, uh, children went to university at the age of 12 or 13, and they studied things like grammar. They studied uh, dialectic. They studied uh, rhetoric. What was the purpose of that? Well, uh, grammar was to understand the structure of language. Dialectic was to understand the application of language through logic, even scientific thinking. And then rhetoric, of course, had to do with expressing or how we express uh, our language, how we persuade. It wasn't until those um, elements were learned that the student went on to subjects. Today, students forget what they are taught because they forget, because we as teachers forget to teach students how to learn. Students leave school, they leave college, they leave universities unable to learn, unable to reason. We even see signs of uh, younger people being unable to debate 
un unable to have dialogue, unable to think, think analytically, scientifically, systematically. They go into the world pretty much unarmed intellectually. So education is not only about developing a broader range of competence, for example, at, uh, at the Institute, which is the only institute in the world based on the Rostian perspective of the post-industrial paradigm, we are also the smallest, I would uh, think the smallest institute uh, in the world, um, but also education has to do with a deeper level of consciousness. So it's not simply competence, but consciousness. At the Institute, we don't focus on training. We don't focus on the instruction of information. We focus on growth, personal growth and development, the construction of knowledge that leads to wisdom. Students can become more knowledgeable based on their teacher's knowledge, but they cannot become more wise based on their teacher's wisdom. We follow a brain-based approach uh, in our instructional design, focusing on things like um, um, Kolb's uh, learning model, um, action learning, um, uh, reflection, transformational learning. Um, but we also focus on principles, scientific principles. The people that go through our program learn profound principles. And a principle is an idea. It's not a behavior. So you don't teach the behavior, you teach the principle. And then we use what's called the three I transformational learning system, which is to internalize ideas at the motive level. In other words, creating the neural circuitry that actually determines how we think and therefore how we behave. Then we have integration, which is the application of internalized principles in a group setting. And then finally, institutionalization of principles throughout, let's say, an organization or a community, which is basically equivalent to culture. In closing, for the human capacity to shape and transform our lives and our world, we must rethink leadership and education. We can no longer cling to an industrial paradigm of a leader in a world quickly moving toward the post-industrial paradigm of leadership. Uh, thank you.